Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 3. I realized after uh, after I got got done the Lord giving the message this afternoon that He gave a message about about messages. Yeah, he, he gave a message about preaching, a message about messages. So I'm, I'm, I, I realized I got I'm qualified now to, to talk about preaching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my mind works weird. All right, I just thought it was funny. Matthew chapter three this evening. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid under the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Whose pan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the privilege to be in your house one more time. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for every testimony, Lord, that was given tonight that brought glory to your name. Lord, we thank you, Lord, uh, uh, for a people with a thankful heart. Uh, Lord, because we've got so much to thank you for. Uh, Lord, we thank you this evening, Lord, for the songs, uh, Lord, yeah. sung with grace and melody under the hearts of the Lord. Uh, but most of all, Lord, that they were right Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, and Lord, we realize tonight uh, uh, that if the testimonies were about Jesus uh, uh, and the songs were about Jesus uh, uh, and we went to pray, we only could pray uh, uh, and we knew that the only way that we could pray was because of Jesus. Uh, uh, Lord, surely we've gathered together uh, in your name uh, and so surely you are faithful who was promised uh, and you're surely in the midst. So we thank you. Lord, now as we come to this part of the service, we ask you as always, Lord, that it would be about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Lord, whether we're preaching about the cross or we're preaching about the Red Sea or we're preaching about the Psalms or whatever it may be, Lord, this whole Bible points to Jesus Christ and Him crucified. So, Lord, let us always remember, Lord, that it's... Lord, wherever we are, Lord, we can see the Gospel. Lord, that wherever we are, Lord, we can see, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book, it is written of me. So, Lord, I pray, Lord, as we open up your book, that you'd apply the message to every heart. Lord, it would never be about us and them, but Lord, it would be about all of us in the power of thy holy word. Lord, let your word go out freely, Lord, and we'll trust in your promise that it will do that which you accomplished, that which you set it out to do. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Last night when I got home from church, I was, uh, I was thinking again about Clarence's message from July 9th on enjoy the blessings of grace. Uh, when I got home last night, I listened to that message yesterday morning, and uh, when I got home last night, that was still the message that was on my mind from, from yesterday morning. And, I, I, and I, I remembered that night, uh, uh, that was 
uh, a Saturday night, July 9th, uh, uh, that night I remember saying that may have been uh, uh, the best message that I've ever heard. And after uh, listening to it a couple more times, uh, I, I'm going to just say it not may, it is the best message that I've ever heard. But uh, when I was thinking about that, it led me to another thought of what is the best message ever preached? What is, the, uh, what is the greatest message that, that's ever been preached? And, uh, and immediately, well, I, I say if it's the greatest message that's ever been preached, it must be in his book. Uh, 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 we find many times throughout his book, uh, 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 we can read me uh, uh, messages that, that, that men of God uh, uh, have delivered on behalf of the Lord. Uh, uh, and I, I, I thought in God's mind, what is the greatest message? And there's a lot of great candidates that you could choose from. And we all, I'm sure, have favorites uh, that are in your mind right now. You can go all the way back. Uh, uh, to the, uh, the smart aleck in me wants to say that this is a lot of people's me favorite messages. It's only one verse. But uh, uh, a lot, uh, <laughs> you can go all the way back to Genesis chapter 20. Uh, uh, and you can, or Genesis chapter 22, excuse me. Uh, uh, and you can find uh, uh, the, the message that, that, that Abraham gave to Isaac on his way up the mountain. Uh, uh, now that's a great message. Uh, Every message doesn't have to be 30 minutes to be good. Uh, 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 Abraham gave a, a, a powerful message uh, that was needful in the moment, uh, and it's needful today. Uh, 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 amen. He said this, uh, My son, God will provide himself a lamb uh, for a burnt offering. Uh, so they went, uh, uh, both of them together. Uh, uh, amen. Uh, you're going to talk about a message, uh, uh, a message about God giving the lamb. Uh, uh, hey, that's a great message. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you're thinking about the greatest messages ever preached, uh, uh, that's one verse. Uh, uh, oh, but what a message. God gave the lamb. Uh, uh, it's God that's going to give him, not just God gives the lamb, God gives Praise himself the Lord. a lamb. Yeah. Boy, what a message. Or you can go into Exodus chapter 20. Now, most of the great messages we read about in the Bible they're great because of the content. They're great because of the way they were delivered or the way people reacted. This one's great because God gave it Himself. Now we think about we think about the the the, the law, and we realize that, that that Moses gave up most of the law. The the Lord gave it to Moses, but to start out with Exodus twenty and one, and God Amen. spake. Now, you talk, you talk about a powerful message. God's the one doing the preaching. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. We're going to read the Ten Commandments. That's, that's where it is. This is well, we, we, we see the Ten Commandments just as the tablets of stone, and that's good. But I want you to realize, God Himself Amen. spoke them to the pieces, to, to the people. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image uh, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or is in the earth beneath or is in the waters under the earth. Uh, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. Uh, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, uh, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Uh, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Uh, but the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day uh, to keep it holy six days shalt thou labor and do thou thy work. Uh, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And thou shalt not do any work. Uh, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter nor thy manservant nor thy maidservant nor thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Uh, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all in them is, and rest of the seventh day. Uh, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Uh, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountains smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood far off. I want you to... I didn't think about this until I was, just, was reading it. I want you to realize people think the Lord's not concerned with how you live. When the Lord preached a message, it was about how you live. Amen. That's good. So, so we're, we're talking about the great messages now. 
First, when we looked at Genesis, uh, 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 Abraham telling Isaac, God will provide himself a lamb. Uh, we go to Exodus, God telling us, uh, 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 amen, the law to live by, telling us how to live. Uh, uh, that's a great message. Uh, uh, you could go on, and uh, you could go to countless places. I'm just going to hit, hit a few high notes. Uh, uh, you could go to Job. Uh, 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 Genesis, uh, uh, Abraham tells us that God's going to him, provide himself a lamb. Uh, uh, I always say about Job, uh, you get far enough down into problems, you get far enough down into despair, you'll start being like Job. I uh, see Job, uh, he skips all the way past all that, although that stuff's great, uh, and he just skips right to the good part. Job 19. Yeah, amen. Powerful message. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, Yet in my flesh shall I see God, Amen. whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. Uh, 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 see, Abraham told us God's going to provide himself a lamb. Uh, 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 but Job tells us the lamb is alive and well. Uh, 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 Job tells us, uh, hey, not only does God provide himself a lamb, uh, he's going to bring me out also. Uh, uh, Amen. Uh, uh, what a message of hope. That's a great Amen. message. We're looking for the greatest message in the Bible now. We're looking. we got some good candidates. We go to the New Testament. We go to the day of Pentecost. Now, that's a great message. Yep. You know, uh, amen. When, if, I, if, I, if I just asked you to pick out the greatest message, now this would be, this would be the first one to come to a lot of people's mind. It probably would be mine. Acts chapter 2. I'm not going to read it all, but but what a powerful message. Uh, uh, the, uh, realize this is the Lord starting the church. Uh, uh, it's got to be good. Uh, it, I mean, it, this has got, got to start out right. Here's how he starts it out. Uh, in Acts chapter 2, verse 22, uh, uh, ye men of Israel, let me go back one. Uh, uh, it, it, it's real good in 22, but I just like 21 real good. Uh, and it shall come to pass uh, that whosoever uh, uh, shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, amen. What a message. Uh, uh, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Uh, Jesus of Nazareth, uh, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, uh, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, uh, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. I'm going to, for sake of time, I'm going to skip all the way down to 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord, both Lord and, Christ. and Christ. Woo! Amen. Boy, if you're going to pick the greatest message ever preached, that'd be a good candidate. The way people reacted to it, the thousands of them got saved. Uh, I, I reckon it accomplished God's purpose. Amen. Or you can go on. And one of my favorites is Paul preaching on Mars Hill. I just like it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Acts chapter 17. This one, this is probably not one that many people would pick. I just, this is one that I go back to all the time because I love it. Uh, uh, verse number 23, then uh, uh, 22, then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things uh, ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, Him declare I unto you, uh, God that made the world. Uh, 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 and we're picking that in some of the best messages of the Bible. Uh, 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 Paul's going to start all the way at Genesis chapter 1. Uh, uh, God that made the world uh, and all things therein. Uh, you say that's not that important of a message. Uh, oh, yes, it is. Uh, 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 amen. And half the churches in the country would hear that message. Uh, uh, that would help them out a lot. Uh, uh, God that made the world. Uh, uh, not half. Uh, that's a discouraging statement. I'm sorry. Uh, it ain't nowhere near half. The world just wants you to think it is. Uh, uh, God that made the world uh, uh, and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, well, if not in temples made with hands, neither is worshiped with men's hands. And as though he needeth any thing, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the, all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, 
Though he be not far. Amen. From any one of us. I'll stop reading it. Well, no, I want one more. For in him we live move. and move right. and have our being. Absolutely. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are his offspring. Paul, I mean, uh, this, isn't, this isn't even a message that we would probably think of if we're just trying to think of the best one ever preached. But, but man, he, he starts all the way at Genesis 1 and gets all the way down to God in us. That's a pretty good message. But I believe I showed my hand a little bit tonight with where I started at. Because I believe the greatest message ever preached is the one that we read about when we started out. The one that John preached in verse number 2. And saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So why, out of all the great messages, why do you believe that is the greatest message? Here's why I believe it's the greatest message ever preached. You don't have to agree with me on the ranking. I'm just giving you something to think about, all right? If I, I, to me, my mind was immediately where my mind went to the greatest message ever preached. And I'm going to explain to you why, but you don't have to accept it, all right? Here's why. It was such a great message. God announced the service 400 years in advance. We put up flyers a couple weeks in advance because we want people to come. And amen, I pray they do. Uh, uh, I want to feed them with the Word. I want to feed them with Miss Lillian's cake. Uh, uh, amen. Uh, we put up some flyers. God put it in His book 400 years in advance to get ready. Sure. Mal Malachi chapter 3, verse number 1. Behold, this is 400 years now in advance. Behold, I will send my messenger. Amen. And he shall prepare amen. the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to His temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in. Behold, He shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. And actually the Lord announced it even before that. Uh, 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 as, as Matthew said, uh, this is He that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Uh, Isaiah chapter uh, uh, number 40, verse number 3. The voice of Him that crieth in the wilderness. Uh, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Uh, make straight in the desert the highway for our God. Uh, uh, I realize it was such a great message. Uh, the Lord told people hundreds of years in advance to look for it. Amen. Number two, it was such a great message that God showed up for the service in a way that He never has to any other. Now we always desire that the Lord dwell with us. We, uh, I've been praying ever since Clarence preached on it or talked about it uh, before a message a while back. Uh, I, I, I've been praying that prayer every time, just desiring that everyone would know that we met with Amen. the Lord every time I'm in service. I've prayed for that in different words and different ways for years, but I just love that way of saying it even. It just, it just excites me even to say it that way. Blessing. Blessing. And when we desire God to visit with us, that's wonderful, and He does. Yes. But God's never showed up quite in the same way in any message I've ever heard than He did in this message. See, it was such a great message that God the Son showed up in verse number 13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. This is uh, the same, the same time, the same event. Uh, uh, he don't say it here in this uh, in this telling of the event. In other places, it's the same time that that that, that John would look out, see him, and say, "Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world." There's a this is such a great event that there's such a great message that God the Son shows up and then. Such a great message in that in verse number 16, and Jesus, when He was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto Him, and He saw the Spirit of God. Wait. God the Son's already there. Now God the Spirit. God the Holy Ghost is showing up. Descending like a dove and lighting upon Him. And it's such a great message. Amen. Now, now I, I don't preach for amens. But I do like it when I hear them. <laughs> Uh, I don't preach for him. I'm going to preach the same whether you amen or not. Amen. <laughs> that was good. But I do like them. But this is an amen like never been amen before and never had been since. In verse number 17, I just, 
I, I just picture it now. I, yeah, y'all, y'all know how I am. I, I, I just get excited picturing the way, the, the way the word of God is, and, and, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, "This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased." It was such a great message. The spirit was so good. Amen. That God, the Son, showed up. God, the Spirit, showed up, and God, the Father, got so happy about it. He had to amen it from heaven. Amen. Amen. Blessing. Blessing. So I believe it's the greatest message ever preached because God announced it in advance. Because God, all three parts of the Godhead showed up. Yes. And because it was preached by Christ's favorite preacher. Amen. amen. Now we all got favorite preachers. It's okay. It, don't, it, it will never insult me if you say, my favorite preacher is fill in the blank and it ain't you. Once they told me one little bit because I ain't my favorite preacher. <laughs> You'll get that in a minute. <laughs> Bless you. It's all right. You're allowed to have a favorite preacher. You're just not allowed to ignore others because they're not your favorite. Yeah, true. That's all right. You're allowed. Christ had a favorite preacher. Yeah, inner circle. You know what Christ had to say about John the Baptist? A man born. Not a man born a woman. Greater than John the Baptist. It sounds to me like he had a favorite. Yeah. <laughs> sounds to me like. Uh, uh, sounds to me like his favorite was the one that got so excited about him showing up, and he was leaping for joy, or he was even born. <laughs> well, that'd, that'd be a good reason to have somebody be a favorite. Surely. But more than that, this message was so great. Now I'm a I'm a title sticker. I'll tell you right now, I'll steal your title nothing. And, and no no time flat. I have no shame. I figure we got the same boss. Uh, I got a license to use it. I, actually, at the house, uh, I, I've got a whole box of Clarence's sermon notes. That there's been times I'm hunting for a message, I'm hunting for a message, and, and nothing there, the Lord will say, go look in the box. And he ain't allowed me to just re-preach one of those outlines yet, but I'll just go through and start thumbing through the titles. And I'll get 50 in or so, and just something clicks. There's the message. I'll steal your title. But you know it's a great message when Christ steals the title. Now, now here's John's title. And say, verse number 2, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 4 and 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Boy, now that's something else right there. That's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> now you know, you know, you know it was good when Jesus takes it and uses it. Amen. But you know it's even better than that. How did it get better than that? The reason I believe it's the greatest message ever preached is because, because it's still today. Amen. The message of the church. Amen. Sure. Amen. The greatest message ever preached. It's, it's, still the, it's still the message today. Yes. Yes. It, it's still, oh, we say it different ways. We say come and be saved. We say come and accept Christ. You might word it differently. But it's that message. It's the greatest message ever preached because it is the message of the church. See, John, I've told you all before, John's job was to prepare them to say, get ready. The Lord's coming. He's coming. Guess what the church's job is? Same thing. It's the same message. Get ready. Repent ye. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Get ready. Because the Lord's yes. coming. Let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for your book. And Lord, a little bit different type of thought this evening, Lord. I'm not trying to set no doctrine or course on ranking messages and all that. I'm not trying to. That's not the point. The point is, that's a great message. Repent you for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Lord, I pray that would be the message here and wherever we go. 
Yes, Lord. Lord, in our, in our homes, in our communities, in our families, Lord, I pray that would be the message of our life. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Lord, our message to ourself. All of us, Lord, I pray that would be our message. We would, we would remember that repentance is not a, a one and done occurrence. But Lord, repentance is how we live our life. We learn to live repented. That's right. Lord, live turned away from sin and live turned unto you. Lord, I pray that our message of our life to ourselves would be repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. Lord, we sure love you. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you filled your book with it. Lord, that you filled your book with messages. Lord, not just not just uh, as I often say, preachable statements, but Lord, full preaching, Lord, full messages. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we ask you to tie together the loose sin and fill in the void that we need because of our inability. Lord, apply the message to each one of our hearts. We love you and we thank you. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen.